Thank you for joining us today. My name is Brendan McCauley. I am CFRA's Global Head of Wealth Management, and I'm joined today by our Deputy Director of Research, Stuart Glickman, who covers the oil and gas industry for us here at CFRA. It's great to have you with us here, Stuart. Thanks, Brendan. So Stu, something that is on everyone's mind and something we're all certainly feeling in our wallets is the recent surge in oil prices. We definitely hear a lot about the war between Russia and Ukraine, but my question is, what is driving the surge in prices? Is this war the main reason? Yeah, it's a fair question. I, I would say that the war in the Ukraine took a, a problem and made it worse. I don't think it was, it's the, the main cause of higher oil prices today that everyone's seeing at the pump. Um, the biggest cause, I think, the primary cause uh, is lack of supply. Um, you know, you've had, you know, 2020 was a terrible year for oil demand. Oil demand collapsed because of COVID. Uh, 2021 was the year of recovery. So we've seen uh, a, lot of, a lot of that uh, decrease in oil prices from prior year made its way back. 2022, we're seeing more of the same. Um, and so um, oil markets are getting tighter. And then you have this invasion of Ukraine um, brought on by Vladimir Putin in late February, early March. And that was kind of the coup de grace for oil prices where you took, you know, demand, demand was already having a tough time uh, getting met by supply. And now we've taken more supply off the market. Supply is strained, oil prices go higher. Understood, okay. And so, you know, one thing we hear about too is how challenging would it be for the rest of the world to shift away from Russian oil and gas if needed. Yeah, uh, that's that's the, the issue that a lot of countries are struggling with today. It depends on where you are. The US uh, can, can make that kind of move fairly easily because we simply don't import that much crude from Russia to begin with. We're talking about somewhere in the neighborhood of seven or 8% of total imports to the US comes from Russia. A lot of that is heavier oils. And that can be replaced with barrels from Western Canada, from Mexico. Um, uh, those are a couple of, of close by and fairly, fairly friendly sources. Mm -hmm. So it's a different kettle of fish when we're talking about continental Europe, where they are importing typically 25 to 30% of their crude oil needs coming from Russia. So if they wanted to kind of just suddenly put a, a cessation to that, a halt to it, uh, you have to find an awful lot of barrels uh, to replace those from Russia. And there just isn't that much spare capacity available in the industry. There's around 5 million barrels a day of spare capacity, most of which is held by Saudi Arabia and the UAE. And continental Europe is probably importing from Russia somewhere around 3.5 or 4 million barrels a day. So that, that, that would leave spare capacity with a razor thin margin and Oil prices, uh, oil markets do not like that. And I think oil prices would move up considerably higher. Got it. So it sounds like an international problem. Um, but given that backdrop, uh, backdrop do, do you think higher energy prices are sustainable or is this a temporary phenomenon? So I, I would say that the phenomenon of oil prices being at 120 bucks, 110 bucks, that kind of range, probably temporary. Um, I think fundamentals support something more like 80 or $90 per barrel. However, this is also in the context of, a, call it the last seven years, where oil prices were predominantly below 60 bucks a barrel. So even 80 or 90, in my opinion, um, is, is a fairly good number for an oil producer. Understood. Uh, so a lot of moving pieces, trends and themes, both here in the U.S. and internationally, but given all that, how would you play the move in oil prices this year in 2022? Right. So in my opinion, the way to play it is to take advantage of the firms that have direct exposure to the price of a barrel of oil, which are the ENPs, the oil and gas exploration and production companies. Um, and, uh, you know, as I mentioned, I think on a fundamental basis, 80 or $90 oil seems very plausible to me. And at those kinds of prices, these firms are going to throw off a tremendous amount of free cash flow. In fact, I would argue probably historically high. Um, you know, a decade ago, oil prices were, were in that low ninety to low ninety dollar per barrel range, but the amount of spending they were doing was so much higher than what we're seeing lately. Um, I, I think that you know they've gotten more efficient, their balance sheets are in better shape. Um, I, I think the amount of free cash flow they're going to turn around this time is going to be considerably better than what they were getting a decade ago. 
Excellent. All right. So looking for free cash flow in the space. Um, I, I know you've dug into this in one of your recent thematic research reports, but what are the major risk factors that oil and gas investors should be aware of when thinking about the industry today? Yeah, it's a great question. The, the biggest risk factor, I think, is, is if something ugly happens with demand, because, you know, OPEC could get greedy. Uh, they, could, they could bring fewer barrels back to the market than people are hoping for. Oil prices could go back to 110, 120 on a temporary basis. Um, and in, in that kind of event, you could push this, the global economy into recession. And once a recession ensues, GDP falls, oil demand goes with it. And so that I think is the, big, the biggest risk factor that you know, if, if oil demand does collapse, um, oil prices are gonna go with it. And then the EMPs that have been riding high for you know, months on end now, uh, will we'll, we'll suddenly see those, those tailwinds turn into headwinds. That I think is the biggest risk. Certainly a big risk and a lot to think about uh, for sure in this world today. So thanks, Stuart, for being with me. It's always great to hear your insights, especially now with everything that's going on in the world from a geopolitical perspective. Certainly a great time for investors to think about what to expect in 2022 from the oil and gas industry. So to learn more about CFRA research or to access Stuart's thematic research on oil and gas, please visit us at advisor.marketscope.com. Thank you.